The Airy TV news broadcast crew and I, Delete Sahai, are now ready for your daily news briefing at 10.30 local time. But first, let us catch up with the major headlines. Eritrea participating at the veterinary vaccine manufacturing meeting. Halai Technical School graduates 42 students. ELN rebels set a halt offensive action this week. Japan gets UN nuclear watchdog approval from water release. On our local news, Eritrea is participating in the 12th Pan-African Harmonization Meeting of Veterinary Vaccine Manufacturing Facilities being held from 3 to 7 July in Abuja, Nigeria. According to the report from the Public Relations Office of the Ministry of Agriculture, Eritrea, after producing two successful animal vaccines against PPR and Newcastle diseases, the invited is invited as a guest of honor in presents the country's historical background, current situations and future plans with regards to animal vaccine production. Eritrea is also invited to be the member of the vaccine producing countries, as the report added. Mr. Emmanuel Mabratu, head of the vaccine production and quality control who is participating in the meeting, said that the general agenda of the meeting is to harmonization of standards for registration of veterinary vaccine and certification of vaccine manufacturing facilities in Africa. Participants in the meeting are reported to be from 13 animal vaccine producing African countries, private vaccine producers, organizations and relevant experts. Halai Technical School graduates 42 students, including 23 females with certificates in computer maintenance, networking and metal work. Indicating that the past 11 years, the Ministry of Education has made substantial investments to equip the school with modern education facilities and reference books. Mr. Binam Solomon, head of the pedagogy at the school, called for the graduates to play a due role in the nation-building process. Speaking at the occasion, Mr. Tesfai Siyum, Director General of Technical and Vocational Training at the Ministry of Education, called on the graduates to further develop their capacity through practice and reading. The representative of the graduates commending the educational opportunity provided expressed readiness to live up to the expectation of the governments and the people that provided them the opportunity. Halai Technical School in its ninth commencement has graduated 372 students. Youth organization in the UK held their third conference on 2nd July in the city Sheff Sheffield. At the meeting in which representative of the sub-organization participated, the members of the youth organization, the Europe virtually took part. Mr. Toa Leohannes, head of the public and the community affairs at the Eritrean Embassy in the UK and the Northern Ireland gave briefing on the objective situation in the homeland, as well as the role of the youth in the nation building process. At the Congress, extensive discussion was conducted focusing on the opportunities and challenges facing the Eritrean youth in diaspora, as well as international regulation and guidelines of the youth organization. The participants also adopted various recommendations, including coordinated effort to strengthen the youth organization, sustainable awareness raising and training programs to a view developed an economic and vocational capacity of the youth. The Congress also elected five members of the Executive Committee for a two-year term. The National Union of the Eritrean Youth and Students Week in the Southern Region was conducted from 13 to, to 3 July under the theme Conscious Youth for Strong Organization and Bright Future, featuring cultural and artistic performances as well as general knowledge and innovative competitions. The Youth Week was highlighted by cultural and artistic performances, as well as general knowledge and innovation competitions. Likewise, heads of the National Eritrean Union and youth students in the subzones of Adduhala, Ibn Haili, Ad Ayeh, the Kamhara and Areza, who played leading role in the addressing of the youth demand and provided the special award. Congratulating the youth organization in the southern region for organizing the Colorful Youth Week, Mr. Saleh Ahmedin, chairman of the National Union of Dirty Youth and Students, 
called for the sustainability of the event. Dear viewers, we will be back with the international news shortly. Do stay tuned. Welcome back. Colombia's Armed Force and National Liberty Army rebels are set this week to halt offensive actions against each other prior to the beginning of the full ceasefire on August. The setup was agreed to June during peace negotiation between the two sides meant an end to the guerrilla group part in the country's nearly 60 years of internal conflict, which had killed at least 450,000 people. The group will continue to respond to attacks on the threat to its unit, it's added. The government's High Peace Commissioner, Daniel Rueda, in the statement on Tuesday said that President Gustavo Petro will make an announcement in the same vein with the explicit and specific orders the armed forces. The full ceasefire set to begin on August 3 and at least for six months, which is concrete step for far the talks which began on November and are parts of the Petro's efforts to end the conflict between the government rebels and the, the crime gangs. On our last news, Japan won approval from the UN's nuclear watchdog on Tuesday for its plan to release retreated radioactive water from the tsunami-wrecked Fukushima plant in the ocean, despite fierce resistance from Beijing and some local residents. After a two-year review, the International Atomic Energy Agency said Japan's plan was consistent and global safety standards are that they would have negligible radiological impact to people and the environment. Japan's government maintained that process is safe as it treated water enough to fill 500 Olympic-sized swimming pools used to cool the fuel rod in Fukushima plant after it was damaged by earthquake and resultant tsunami. Japan has not specified a date to start the water releasing plant. Officials' approval from the National Nuclear Regulatory Body of Tokyo, Electric Power, with final words, the plan unveiled on 2021 could come as early as this week. Japanese fishing union have long opposed the plan, saying it would undo work to repair reputations after several countries banned some Japanese food products after 2011 disaster. Dear viewers, we have come to the end of tonight's news. Let's have a quick recap of the headlines. Eritrea is participating at the veterinary vaccine manufacturing meeting. Halai Technical School graduates 42 students. ALN rebel said to halt offensive action this week. Japan gets UN nuclear watchdog approval to water release. That will be all with our local and international news. Thanks for watching. Good night.